One of the cool things I thought about uh, getting a cart was tires. I spend a lot of money and anybody at autocrossers or does any type of racing knows the tires can cost a lot of money, especially if you get the fast ones. Well, the fastest tires you can get for this, uh, whether it's sprint racing or autocrossing, are going to cost you around $200 for a full set. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, tires are different size, front to back. Backs are a little wider than the fronts, as you can tell. And actually, I think the diameter is a little more. Um, they're pretty standardized in size. You don't really get a lot wider or narrower or uh, aspect ratios or anything like that. What you do with a car, you just get the stock uh, standard size, and you, they vary in uh, stickiness. And obviously, for an autocross, you're going to want something a little stickier than you would for a sprint race or a road course. One of the cool things I thought about uh, getting the cart was tires. I spend a lot of money and anybody at autocrossers or does any type of racing knows the tires can cost a lot of money, especially if you get the fast ones. Well, the fastest tires you can get for this, uh, whether it's sprint racing or autocrossing, are going to cost you around $200 for a full set. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, tires are different size front to back. Backs are a little wider than the fronts, as you can tell, and actually I think the diameter is a little more. Um, they're pretty standardized in size. You don't really get a lot wider or narrower or uh, aspect ratios or anything like that. What you do with a car, you just get the stock uh, standard size, and you, they vary in uh, stickiness. And obviously for an autocross, you're going to want something a little stickier than you would for a sprint race or a road course. The tires tend to lose air. They don't seal very well, which isn't that big a deal. Uh, they don't hold a whole lot of pressure either. I think about 30 pounds is a lot um, to get you a nice air gauge. But when you go to put air in them, you'll see that uh, they fill up really fast. Um, not only can you buy them really cheap, but you can also mount them yourselves. And I've got a, a little device right here that I haven't really got to use yet because I'm still using the tire that came with the cart. This is a little V-breaker. You can break them off the, uh, off the rim. This is a rim here. That's different than, than what I got in the car. This actually has what, what's essentially like a bead lock. These right here hold the tire on because you develop so much cornering force in, in these little carts uh, to hold the tire on. These got little seals in them, just little gaskets you know, or O-rings in there to seal them up. Okay. I'm trying to think of things I haven't told you yet. Um, I forgot to tell you about the steering. Um, the tie rods are adjustable just like on a car. Um, and you can tell I got a different point right here that you can move this uh, bolt over uh, if they haven't got enough. So that's that's fairly adjustable too. Um, you got built built in tow, you know, so when you turn this way, the inside tire actually goes turns further than the outside tire. Clutch is on the steering wheel right here. Um, this really threw me off the first time I, I drove one of these. Uh, not used to braking with my, my left foot. You got brake, brake on the left, gas on the right, just like your typical go-kart, but you got the clutch up here. Getting all that coordinated the first time you're riding one will feel kind of funny. The cool thing is, is that you don't have to use the clutch unless you're pulling out. When you shift, you just breathe off the gas, shift, get back on the gas. Uh, they say, um, if you downshift it and you don't hit the brake, downshift once. If you hit the brake, you got to downshift twice. Um, finding out what gear to be in and how many times upshift and downshift is one of the things that I got to learn um, on an auto cross course where you don't get to learn the track. Uh, you really don't learn it until you're done. <laughs> so it can be a little difficult. So I'm going to have to to work on that. I'm not really not used to using all six gears. You also change the gear ratios on these to where you should hit all six gears for autocross where with my Evo generally didn't get out a second unless I was on a fast course and you hit third gear. Uh, seat's kind of important. You want to make sure you got a good fitting seat, snug fitting seat. Um, they come in various sizes. This one luckily fits me fairly good in the cart, you know, when I bought it, so I don't think I'm going to have to change it out. Um, they are very tight and if you get one that fits right, it's tight. It's very snug. Uh, they make these rib protectors. I got mine here to protect your ribs when you're riding these things because they will, especially if you're sprint racing or road racing, will beat you to death. 
I found that uh, this is a basic rear protector. Just made to keep your rims a little uh, protected on the sides when you're running this thing. Um, actually, I should probably tell you a little bit about the safety gear that's required. Now, all this isn't required. I think uh, for autocross, uh, you got to have some abrasion resistant uh, jeans on. You don't want to wear shorts. Uh, it's abrasion resistant top. Highly recommended you get a full suit. Um, but you can get like a jacket uh, to cover your upper part. You want to have gloves on. Um, a lot of this stuff is because there's, there's a slight chance if you roll over, uh, the hot exhaust is going to be touching you. You do are required to have a full face helmet. I've got some decent shoes. These, these aren't fireproof or anything. Uh, I don't think the, uh, the suits for carding, they're a little different the spec on them than they are for like road racing, so I don't think they're fireproof either. But this is generally what you, you look like. You've got to have a neck brace because these things will beat you to death, especially if you're sprint racing or road racing. So this right here is a good thing to have. So, what's the cost to get into doing this, you ask yourself? Um, depends on what you're willing to pay, I guess. Uh, if you want a brand new cart uh, with all new gear and everything, you're looking at eight, ten thousand dollars for the best you can buy. But if you're willing to take a used cart that's in pretty good condition, uh, you can usually get pretty good package deals that have everything you need to run, including you know uh, carburetor tuning kit, uh, spare parts. I got a bunch of rims and. Uh, just all kinds of different stuff well, when I bought this one. It even come with a trailer you see over there in the corner to haul the thing around with. <coughs> uh, I paid about $3,000 for this whole package. It even came with this racing suit, the full face helmet, gloves, uh, the shoes are mine. Uh, the neck brace came with it. Uh, this is a 2001 Burrell chassis, which is kind of old for a car chassis, but I don't think it's it's been abused that much. The guy didn't run it a whole lot. Uh, he did run it, but you know, it's been at least a year, I think, in, in his garage. Um, and it looked, it's in really good shape. The engine's in really good shape. So it didn't take much for me to, to get it ready to go. Um, if, you, if you're not willing to spend that much, you're probably going to need to do a little work uh, to, the, to the thing, or it might not run as good as it. Should, but that'll, that'll get you in the ballgame. And if you ask me, it's really not a bad price for, for the thrill of this ride. Uh, coming from my Evo, which is quite a thrill auto crossing anyway, this thing uh, just put a smile on my face that I couldn't get off until I had one myself. And now every time I take it out, I still get the same smile. So um, it's definitely entertaining and, and fun. And I highly suggest you at least go try. Uh, run somebody else's, take a fun run, uh, and run one of these things and see what it's all about. Um, I will have some more videos probably of me racing this thing. Uh, may not be a whole lot on uh, what I'm doing to it, uh, but I'm definitely going to have some more Evo videos. Uh, it's gotten a little cold, um, November now, but I do plan to do some stuff with brakes. Take a look over here. I brought Molly a set of Breaks off of a wrecked Evo. I want to take these things apart, show you what the seals look like inside these things, and I think I'm going to. They look like they're in pretty good shape, but they do have a little bit of paint damage to fix the paint on them. So look for that video. That'll probably be my next video. So till then, I'm Robbie Nelson. Uh, have fun. Keep the shiny side up.